Our next guest has worked with all of our models and has created the beautiful images you see in our stores, catalogs, and fashion magazines. Let's have a behind the scenes look at photographer Russell James at work. Please welcome Russell James. <laughs> Hi, Russell. Hi, did you watch the video that we were just playing? I did have a little look at that video, yes. So what I love about that video is kind of like the history of your hairdos. It's been through some transitions, yeah. I can say, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And you've true. been with the company for a really long time. And when I think about Russell James, I think about the shots that you've taken all over the world, and you're the guy that will do whatever it takes to get the shot you've done underwater. Um, you've been in with a tank and everything underwater for photos. Yes, Clips. and I hate to remind you, Monica, but you almost run me over in a boat once whilst I was underwater shooting for Victoria's so Secret, that but that's, that's a whole other that story. That was an accident. Actually, you were underwater, and um, I was feeling seasick because I'm not that great with water. And so the guys, we had drifted and you were under and we drifted and I said, you please take me back to shore and the propellers were, but we don't need to talk about that. We don't that need was... to talk about that, no. I was shooting with dolphins underwater with Giselle at the time in a, in a swimsuit and it yeah. sounded like a very easy, fun idea and yeah. it was a fun idea. But what you've done crazy, crazy things. I mean, really seriously, that we've planned shoots with you and we're like, really, you wanna do that? <laughs> and you just do anything. And I must say, this is the most dressed up I've ever seen Russell. Normally you don't have shoes on and he has flip flops on tonight. So thank you for dressing up. You're I very welcome. It. If you'd heard the debate backstage about whether I wear a jacket or not, and you know, I had to call my mum in Australia and she said, love, go in the t-shirt, it's okay. Yeah, it's you. So, yeah. It's you, don't change it, not now. So what have you done? What have you... I th I'd say the range, I, yes, it's true, I love the adventure and I try not to create the adventure just because of it, but we've travelled to the tops of glaciers and shot on in uh, the wonderful glacier of Iceland, for example, underwater you've already mentioned. Yeah. Um, Heidi Klum said it once though, she said, Rusty, how come when I work with you, I go on an airplane, then I go on a helicopter, then I go on another boat and then I have to walk up a beach and I end up on a beach like any other beach? And I said, I, I don't know. That's Blue sky, water, it kind of looks the same everywhere. Somehow, right? but it is a part of the... The uh, aspiration of photography to me is just being in this amazing place. And often when you get the people there, and we get the models there from Victoria's Secret, very often, once they're there, they're like, oh my gosh, this is special. And that's a great way to go into a shoot. It inspires you. Rather it, than shooting with a backdrop, you could be anywhere, but just being in that place. It does. It does. We I can go to a regular beach or we can, you know, go to a beach that's been an epic adventure. And the girls really appreciate it. And there's a lot of challenges. I remember once the the um, sun was coming down and like all the black flies hit us and everybody had like their this much of their faces showing because <laughs> you know but we're trying to get that final shot so there's always some adventure especially when you're shooting with us russell how did you start like what's your path that you well, took to become well i've got a preface that the answer to that by saying that I recommend anybody to start photography or anything at all through education. That's the number one key to everything. Um, I didn't have that opportunity, so I took the very logical path. I first started making trash cans in a factory, okay. and um, that worked pretty well. And I later started. Well, there are trash cans at photography shoots. Every so shoot that I've been has a trash can, yeah. so I, yeah. I've seen the connection through that, that path. Um, once I started to do well at that, I started to train dogs. Um, now, you know, for some of the, you know, my assistants that I work with now, uh, who I'm very close with, that's proved to be invaluable. Yeah, plus um, every model I know has a dog and they bring them on shoots, right? Yes. So that helps. There's a rule that if you have a small uncontrollable dog, you should bring it on the photo shoot. <laughs> that's a general rule of fashion. No matter who you are. No matter who you are. <laughs> and, and the more it poops, the better. Yes. That's, that's the general rule. Then yep. that's how your dog's evaluated. Yes. Um, then I was actually a, a... In all walks of life, by the way, not just in photography. <laughs> yes, in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Then I was a police officer, which sounds like an unusual step, but I joined the police force because I thought I could get to train dogs. But I actually learned a lot of skills doing that to, in the job that I do now as a photographer. That, uh, so wait, me. how did you even go into the police force? Like what, I don't want to say possessed you, but what made you even think about the police force? Well, I 
was suffering from a lack of education. I had studied metalwork. I was training dogs and I loved doing that. So I had yeah. this harebrained idea that if I went into the police force, I could work with the dog unit. What I forgot to check before I applied and actually was accepted was there was no dog unit in the Western Australian Police Force. Oh, no. Yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. But yeah. I had five amazing years, of which I'm very proud and very, I had, was very um, inspiring and also, you know, just saw other sides of life. That, so that was a really valuable part of my life. And then how do you go from police officer to photographer? Well, to fill in all the blanks and even the embarrassing ones, I went to... Um, Please whilst, do. Oh, yes. <laughs> I went to uh, Japan. I went there on holiday, on vacation. I'd never been out of the country before. I was 24 years old. Mm -hmm. And somebody over there asked me to model, like model standing clothes, wear a watch, look at a watch. Mm -hmm. And then they offered to pay me like, money. I was just going to say, for money? Yes. Sure. And I said, so I do. And I so thought, mm, this is an interesting concept. But that was my first exposure to what I would say was the fashion industry and this massive industry that is around photography. Yeah. Um, from there, I trailed off to Europe. And it was up in Sweden in the late, uh, in the late 80s that I was had befriended a great photographer called Carlo Bosco. Mm -hmm. And I was working with him in a dark room back in the days that probably no one here remembers because you're all too young. But I came up on film and negative and being in the dark room. Mm -hmm. And I was working in the dark room with him and I just saw the image come out on the paper and I said, do that again. And he did another room and I said, do that again. I said, this is what I want to do. So that's how I found photography. And from that moment, I just started to take photographs. Oh, wow. So then when you were on set and you were modeling, you did start taking pictures there. Like, how did you get your very first job? Like, who said, you know, I've seen Russell's photographs. I want to hire him. Oddly enough, it had nothing to do with the modeling. I went to live in Sweden. I was not just interested in photography. I was obsessed. I'd sold everything that I possibly could. I'd barter. I'd even, for some, so, some strange reason, credit card companies would give me a credit card, so I'd, I'd buy cameras, but forgot about the part that you have to actually pay it back, and how would I do that? Um, so the real break came for me. I was shooting uh, portraits of people down in North Africa, around Europe, and I was given a break by the United States of America in New York. I was given an amazing break. I was, um, I'd been across and mostly I'd had the revolving door of visiting agents with um, accents saying, you'll never work in this uh, city ever, go away. Yeah. But um, then I found someone who did believe me. It was a creative director called David Lippmann. Mm -hmm. And through introductions he made, I was hired in the same week for a W magazine, which at that time was just beginning to explode, yeah. and also for Sports Illustrated, and I shot a cover of Tyra Banks. So those two things I gave me the opportunity. I remember that cover. I didn't know that was you. That and was stop an me on the cover, it's Tyra. Yeah, but you're right. We look, we look alike, you <laughs> yeah, know, side by side. Two, I've never seen you in a two-piece, so I was confused. Yeah, because I, yeah. I had the t-shirt, and yeah, that's yeah. what my, my mother said. No, but that was a great cover. It was a great, it was like in, where was it shot? Like Africa or something? It was... We shot that in Harbour Island. Um, really? Yes. Because yeah. it looked very tropical. It did, and Harbour Island is a wonderful, beautiful yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it was all about the light, and it was all about Tyra, and it was just a, a remarkable breakthrough moment. And having the fashion side on the other side with W Magazine, I got these two sort of careers going at the same time. So it was so quite it opened unusual. opened the doors. It, it opened the doors. It opened the opportunity, and the hard work was yet to come. But it did give me the opportunity. So tell me about the relationship, because I've seen you work, your relationship with the models. And when you're shooting with them, um, you know, Italo and Meredith were talking about that it's the Victoria's Secret family and everyone, you know, spends a lot of time together and they really are treated like everyone's a friend. So what's the relationship that you have? Because I know that a lot of girls, because they're in their lingerie, it's, they can feel very vulnerable. You're the photographer. Like, what do you do to get the The first shot? thing I do is I always wear lingerie as well yeah. because yeah. that yeah, creates yeah, yeah. a comfort between us. <laughs> yeah. Um, but quite, quite, thank you for the love. Um, but quite, um, I'm quite glad serious. you called it lingerie, not underwear, because... It's yes, Australia, yeah. I know, that's Australian. Yeah. Um, I guess this goes back to one of the questions you asked me earlier about, for example, the police force. Yeah. You learn different ways to relate to people. And um, I guess the biggest thing is like there's this uh, stereotype where people imagine it's like, you're gorgeous, you're sexy, everything, you're so beautiful. And I think that's what makes a person most uncomfortable. Right. I do a lot of art photography for exhibitions. A lot of that is nude. And the last thing you want to do is create that kind of energy. So with, while well, everyone is perhaps anticipating we're talking about highly... Um, let's say, uh, inappropriate things. We're right. actually sitting here talking about how's your diet, what are you eating, do you know, does that give you gas? What, you know, just it's very, how are your it kids? sounds very mundane. What did you how do over the kids? weekend? Exactly. Yeah. So I would say for me, it's more, more or less a relationship with a brother and sister type relationship. Yeah. And um, it does become family. After some time, it becomes family. As the Victoria's Secrets, it started as jobs. 
a lot of jobs led to a long relationship. And then with a lot of the, the, um, the wonderful people that are involved now and these amazing girls, it became they know a lot about me, I know a lot about them in a, in a good way. I mean, sometimes you're on a shoot for two weeks or three weeks and you're just there like when you shoot the swim book. So some of the girls are there for, it's like multiple days and some come in and some leave and you have dinners with some. I mean, it's just, it really is, it's like taking a vacation except for the work. Exactly. Right. There is, you know, I, I can, on the plate, there's a lot of hard work involved that probably isn't seen. Um, but it is, you know, Miranda Kerr taught me yoga on the beach on an island. And now you do <clears throat> yoga. Well, yeah, I, I do some form of yoga. I haven't given it yeah. a name yet, but it's going to have a name. When everyone else is doing the triangle, I think mine's more of a rectangle, square. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's, um, but downward dog, you should be good at that one because of your experience with dogs. I very, I'm very good with downward dog and so, upward dog. So here we have a picture of Miranda Kerr. And what I want to get to is your work with philanthropy. Because you're a photographer, you use your celebrity, a famous photographer, you use your celebrity for good causes. And you've done a lot of work with some of our girls. And then you've, you've met them um, you know, through our shoots. But where was that one taken? That was taken out in uh, Palm Desert, out um, in Shoshone, Native American country. And um, so what's Miranda Kerr naked got to do with philanthropic endeavor? That's what uh, I'm wondering. Yes. Well, I, you know, I had to come up with something. But um, <laughs> I'm very involved with reconciliation issues and um, creating partnerships with marginalized communities. And what I discovered through photography is you have this incredible communication vehicle. As we see now, it's just exploding um, across the world in the way photographs are shared. So I've used photography to, uh, on a project specifically called Nomad Two Worlds. And this is what we're looking at here. This is... This is some footage from Nomad Two Worlds and it started as an art collection that was in collaboration with Indigenous Australian artists, then with Native American artists, now with Haitian artists. And now it's become a socially conscious business, meaning mm -hmm. we create partnerships with these, um, with the communities. We have an amazing network ranging from fashion to um, to all types of business. And there's this amazing network of creativity in these other communities. And so we work to connect them. So all of the girls, Miranda, Erin, um, Adriana. years ago. Heidi, Heidi I, started. I put Heidi in mud naked on the floor and had her act mm -hmm. out a, a theme. And, um, yeah. Uh, you know, it was just amazing. So yeah, over the years, they have played an incredible role in helping in very important issues. So our next guest, who's Aaron Heatherton, you did a project with recently. So if you can stay just for a minute, I want to bring Aaron out, and then I want you guys to tell me about the project.